So today we're going to talk about agent ops and how I think this is going to be a pretty important player when it comes to making your agents not only become more consistent with their output, but also more efficient. So I had heard of this app a couple of times. Some of you guys had actually suggested it to me during the one on ones. And I think just because there's so many things popping up, maybe I hadn't actually implemented it. But had I known it was so easy to implement, it's literally just three lines of code like 30 seconds to set up, I would have done it. And for some of you guys that I've spoken to, I know one of the topics during our one-on-one -on -one sessions has been that sometimes the agents don't give consistent output. So I think agent ops is gonna be really helpful with that because really it's gonna give you visibility on what's going on in the background for your career AI project when it's running. And one of the ways that it does this is whenever you set it up on your project, which again, let me show you real quick. It's literally just these two lines. It's import agent ops and then this command agent ops in it and your API key. Also, it's free to use. But anyway, after you set that up in your project, once you go to your agent ops dashboard, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. And one of the important things and some of the important information you're going to see here is going to be the prompt tokens that are being used by your project as well as your completion tokens. So prompt tokens refers to the text that's being processed within your request. So things like your agent descriptions, your agent backstory, your task descriptions, and completion tokens refers to the actual strings or the actual text that's being processed within the response when the large language model is called. For me with my projects, I tend to write pretty extensive expected output samples for my career projects but I didn't realize there was such a big difference between the prompt tokens and the completion tokens. The other thing is really nice is that you get this chat viewer of the entire conversation that your crew has with, you know, the other agents, which you do get on VS code when you run it, but I just don't think it's very nice to look at. And also it's not the easiest thing to navigate or click through. But where I think the biggest value comes from is this section right here at the bottom called session replay. And in this little timeline, what you can see each of these bars right here is the amount of time that each of the agents ran for. And when you hover over it with your mouse, you can see things such as how long that process was running, how many tokens that particular agent used, and then when you click it here on the right, you can see the details of the actual LLM calls that, will, that were made by that agent and the output that it received. When I started building CRAI projects, I know a lot of the money that I spent was just, you know, trying things out with ChatGPT4 just so I could try and get the best results. But whenever I fine tune anything within my agents, I was really just kind of shooting in the dark, guessing. And the assumption typically was that if I wrote more detail in my descriptions, in my expected outputs, that I would get a better result. That's also one of the recommendations I've given you guys. And I think for the most part, that is true. But with a tool like this, we're pretty much getting direct feedback on the performance that's actually going on in the background. And again, guys, me talking about this product is taking longer than the actual setup itself. If you want to set it up, all you would have to do is go to agentops.ai, click dashboard. It's going to take you to this dashboard page where you can just sign up with your GitHub account. And then right off the bat, within their quick start guide, you just copy these two lines. You don't have to copy OpenAI because you're probably using that already anyways. You're going to paste that on your project in the main file that you're going to run. For some of you, that might just be main.py, but for this template project, which I'm going to have the link in the description, we're going to paste it in streamlitapp.py. You do need to paste the API key that they give you on here, but again, super easy to get. You just go to their settings here, project API keys. You can copy it from there. And before you run it, make sure you go ahead and do pip install agent ops. And for the next time you initialize or run this CRAI project, all you're going to have to do is go back to your dashboard and here in the session drill down, you can select the session that you last ran and you'll be able to get all this information about your crew AI project. You don't have to add any other code. You don't have to add any other credentials. You don't need to set up the front end. Setting it up is literally that simple. I think this is going to be super helpful for me as I move forward, building out other agent systems. But let me know what you think in the comments. Have you tried this out before for yourself? Have you found it helpful in your personal projects? And also, if you have any questions about how you can apply agent systems to your business or to your personal projects, I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can book a one on one consultation with me. I'm really excited for this technology and how much better it's going to make future agent projects. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.